I'm back down here on our sailboat here in Biloxi at the Schooner Pier and you might have noticed that I haven't shot a video on here doing a cooking video since like last winter, last February, last spring when it was cool weather. I'm here to tell you we have had one extremely hot summer. I mean excruciating hot and just imagine how hot it gets in this sailboat without air conditioning. Imagine yourself in your car in a parking lot in the dead of summer, we're in the middle of August, windows rolled up, that's how hot it gets. You just really can't stand it. So I've got a cure for that and I'm gonna show it to you right after this. Alright, what I've got is I've got a portable air conditioner installed on our sailboat. Instead of the type, there are air conditioners on sailboats, a lot of them come with them nowadays, but this is a 1978 Hunter Cherubini, did not come pre-installed, and it costs somewhere around $2,500 to $3,000 for a built-in air conditioner, and it depends on salt water, and there's just every reason in the world for me to go with this. whole lot cheaper does just as good. This cabin is not all that big, for one thing. That's even with the head and the forward berth, the V-berth area. This is more than capable. And what I have is the new air. Now this thing is not only an air conditioner. In the winter months, it will also act as a heater. It is a heat pump. It has a reversing valve built within it and it changes direction of the Freon, the flow, and it converts over to heat. This new air is capable of cooling 525 square feet. This boat is nowhere near that as far as living quarters. It's actually less than half of that, but consider the heat load. You need something twice as big to tackle the heat load that's on this. When the sun's out, 95, 100 degree weather outside, it requires what I have here, and it's 14,000 BTU. 12,000 BTU is one ton of coolant, and it's capable of uh, cooling 500 square feet, but that's talking about your structures that's insulated, such as a workshop, a garage, a room in your home, things of that nature. So that's exactly why I went with the bigger unit. I'm gonna have a link in the description box for any of you that might be interested. It's a good solution if you need cold air. We're getting ready to get started on this cook here in just a second, and uh, guess what? I'm not sweating for once, and I'm able to pull it off thanks to new air. What I've done is I took about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil into that. I'm going in with my copious amount of garlic here. This is probably around a half a cup. It's actually one whole bulb of garlic. That's what I'm using. All right, this garlic is not going to go long. About 30 seconds just to kind of release some of its aroma, its oils. But at the end of that, I'm going to add in some paprika, going in about a tablespoon to start. And we're just trying to add color to this oil. Alright, also into that I'm going to add a little cayenne pepper. That's probably about a quarter of a teaspoon. And when you smell your garlic, like I'm smelling now, it's time to go in with your shrimp. I've got one pound of peeled and vein Gulf shrimp. These shrimp come from the very waters that this boat is sitting in. All right, this doesn't take long. About three, four minutes tops, the shrimp will be done. But the first thing we're going to do before that happens is we're going to add in some salt. We got to season our shrimp. Keep them moving, keep them stirring. Now I'm gonna add in some crushed red pepper. That should be plenty. Give that a good stir. Very simple, very basic recipe, but my God, is it delicious. I'm gonna take and add one P 
piece of cold butter. This is a whole stick of butter. I've got it divided into five pieces. We're going to add this piece of butter in. We're going to let that melt. There's one half of one lemon and mix all that in well. The lemon with the garlic, insane flavors. Now I'm going to add in some wine, some Pinot Grigio. This goes very well with shrimp. We're not putting a whole lot, just a little bit for flavor, maybe a couple tablespoons. That's about it. We're going to continue to cook the shrimp. They've only been going a few minutes. In addition to that, we're going to add in some parsley. This is Italian parsley fresh. Now I've got more that I'm on top at the end. Give all this a good mix. Now we add the remainder of the cold butter. We're just going to melt this in, stir it in. We're going to plate the shrimp up. We're going to serve the sauce over that. It's going to be really good with just some French bread. And so you know, this also goes very well over pasta. It goes good over grits, like shrimp and grits. It's good many ways, but overall, it's just really good by itself. Now we're going to top it with a little parsley. And that is beautiful. I'm going to cut some French bread. We're fixing to try these out. All right, let's try this shrimp out. Mm, bursting with the garlic, of course. Like I said, I put copious amounts of garlic. That lemon is really shining through. I love eating something like this. Like I said earlier on grits, but take French bread. Don't toast the bread. Just sop up that goodness right there. It pairs so well with the shrimp. Mm. That's a local brewery here over in Kiln, Mississippi. This is a new label here. I haven't seen this and picked it up. It's uh, KMG Gold. A really good beer. Mm. And one thing I did that I didn't show is I went ahead and added more cayenne in there because I do like a kick to it. And let me tell you, it's got a kick to it. It's really good. I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, smoke your ribs.